Hi, I'm Becky Creighton, President of Culinary Connectors. And I'm Elizabeth Westner, the Underground Gourmet, and we are the Dishing Duo. We are here today at Pacific Mercantile in Denver, Colorado with Jorge De La Torre. Welcome. Thank you. Jorge is the Dean of Culinary Education of Johnson & Wales here in Denver, and he is going to show us today how to take unique ethnic ingredients and make multiple recipes. Delicious. Jorge, it looks like we have some yummy, delicious mushrooms over here. Yeah, what's really nice about being in a Asian market or you know, any, whenever you go to ethnic markets, is the produce that you can find. It's different than any of the usual markets you go to. So, and you're going to see in a lot in the Asian markets that they put a lot of emphasis on individual wrapping. So you're going to see some of the apple pears that are individually wrapped. You can take a look at these three different mushrooms: the shimeji, the shiitake and the gnocchi mushrooms, you're never going to get that anywhere else. Um, so these are a great way to give them a try, and they're in little packages, so when you give them a try, if you didn't like them, they're not for you, you didn't waste too much time, but they're really delicious and they add a different depth to your repertoire in the kitchen. Awesome. And are we going to get to eat these today? Yeah, yeah, we're going to make a little quick marinated salad with that. I'm going to do a quick, uh, quick, nice, yeah, it's like a marinade, so it'll be nice. Awesome. Yep. We are in the noodle section here at Pacific Mercantile with Jorge. Jorge, can you kind of walk us through all these different noodles that are here? I mean, this aisle is like 20 feet long and it's just packed with noodles. Sure, even this is a mostly a Japanese and a Hawaiian restaurant. They have plenty of other Vietnamese and Thai kind of rice noodles too, so you can take a look at what they do. Rice noodles, great right now, especially great for people who have gluten uh, intolerances, so that's a great way to get your noodle intake, so you can take all that. Otherwise, here you can see mostly a Japanese selection. We have some, uh, well, for instance, right now, what we're going to use today, we have a, a soba noodle. It's a buckwheat noodle. Uh, here's a variation I saw right now. This is buckwheat with green tea, so it kind of has a green tea and a green color to it. We have udon noodles, and those are thicker noodles. <clears throat> They're all made of wheat, but this is great for soups and for stir fries. This one is great for cold. It's typically used for cold noodles, although it can be put in soups. It cooks really quick. You'll see it's super thin. And then we have uh, some of the somen noodles over there, mostly for soup applications is what you're going to find them for. But they come individually wrapped. They're really beautiful. Uh, again, just like I was talking about in produce, a lot of emphasis on how things are packaged. So really nice. Is there another way to cook them other than just boiling them? Or do you have to boil them first or stir-fry No, fry yeah, you, you need to boil them first, and then you can add them to a stir-fry. Absolutely, but you definitely need to boil them first. Even the really thin ones here? Well, those thin ones can even be, um, those are the rice ones and the vermicelli. You could throw those in a fryer and they puff up really huge. I don't know if you've ever seen that application yeah. where they just look like uh, big clouds in oh, two seconds. So you can cool. do that right away. Very cool. So, Excellent. Thanks, let's, go, let's go cook them up. Yeah, let's go cook. So it looks like we are in your favorite part of this yeah, market. Um, you say the freshest fish you can find. Yeah, this is when I want to have seafood. I always come here. It's fresh seafood. I, here's how I figure it. One, Asians, high emphasis on ultra fresh seafood. Most of it will probably be used for some sushi application or to be eaten raw. So it has to be ultra fresh. And the selection is like you'll find none other. So I always love coming here. You know, you saw that footage of the tuna. And not only is this place just Japanese, but it is Hawaiian too. So one of the typical Hawaiian dishes is poke. And that's Yum. a cut tuna and it has red onion and soy sauce and kukui nuts and seaweed. And that is a very typical Hawaiian dish and I love it. I mean, for me to make it at home, I'd have to have a whole another arsenal of things. So I just come here because they do it best. And it reminds me of when I used to work in Hawaii. I love it. Awesome. And we're getting this for lunch today, I think. That's right. We're going to make, we're going to use this in some, and there's also other things like taraco and seaweed salad, and we saw the marinated baby octopus. So, you know, like I said, always try a little bit. You can buy just a little. And what other fish are they known for in this, um, either in this market or because it's mostly sure, Japanese? Sure. Things that you'll rarely see are whole fresh sardines. 
mackerel, Yum. Um, fish that are already uh, that are already uh, marinated in uh, miso and sake. Uh, we're going to try some of that, and maybe you've tried that miso cod before. Mm-hmm. They have that. That's a delicious dish. Let's see what else they have. You, you know, the other thing is that they emphasize on whole fish, so that way you can see the freshness. You can gauge the freshness by checking the gills, the eyes, the smell. You know that they're going to do it right. But yeah, like I said, I love the sardines here. Where else do you find sardines? You don't. You I'm, do not. I'm thinking we might have to delicious. heat up the grill That's and, right. and have a little them. grilled sardines yeah, this delicious. afternoon. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So now we're in front of the curries, and you were saying that curry is a comfort food for Japanese? Yeah, it is the number one comfort food for Japanese families.